So we left off last time with the problem of a player walking along a curved path and we want to calculate the distance traveled along that path. And we made an approximation. We broke the path up into points like this and then we found line segments like so. And we calculated the length of each line segment. Uh, and now we want to approve our approximation by it by making those line segments smaller. You can see that if I make the line segments half as long, then my blue curve is much closer to the orange curve than my green curve is. And so I'm going to get a better approximation. So that's what we're going to explore in this video. And we're going to do so by rearranging our summation. Before we had a summation of the length of each uh, line segment, I'm going to do slightly th something slightly different this time. It comes out to the same thing, but it's a different way of writing it. Okay. This time my summation is going to be my velocity at a given time times the amount of time that we're traveling at that velocity. And we're going to do a summation. Let's say that we're going to do a summation uh, over three hours worth of time. Then we're going to go from zero to two. Remember to keep an eye out for off by one errors. We're going to do time zero, one, and two. Zero, one, and two. And that's a total of three hours because our starting index is zero. Remember, just a little bit of a terminology review. This guy right here is called the index. Actually, did I mention that last video? I'm not sure. Well, now I have. That t value is called the index. And uh, so let's get started here. Let's say that the player is going random number. I'm going to pull out of a hat. 3600 meters per hour. Okay? That'll be this velocity. Meters per hour is a velocity. And that is times one hour. So that's my delta t. Delta t means what is the change in time? And if we start counting at the beginning of an hour and counting at the end of an hour, one hour has passed. So that would be one hour times, see we're multiplying here. So I'm just I'm just writing what's inside this summation. I'm writing it here, but I'm filling in the value. So 3,600 meters per hour for one hour. If we look at the units, we see that the hours cancel out. There's an hour downstairs and there's an hour upstairs and they cancel out. So 3,600 times one is just gonna be 3,600 meters. I mean, that makes sense. You go 3,600 meters an hour. For one hour, you go 3,600 meters. And we're doing this for three hours, so we're Assuming we go another 3,600 meters for another hour, 36, another 3,600 meters, and then lastly we go, we're just staying at a constant right here. So over three hours, this is hour one, this is hour two, and this is hour three, hour three, we're going this much. So if I want to do a summation, I have to add all that together. 3600 plus 3600, one for each hour, we get 10,800 uh, meters. So we've done a simple summation over three hours. Now if we want to get more accurate, if we want to follow something more like the blue line instead of the, instead of the green line, then we have to reduce this unit right here, the hours. Instead of hours, we're going to use seconds. Seconds are much more precise than hours are. Uh, so let's say we're going to use this velocity. Um, 3,600 meters per hour is going to be about 60, 60 meters per second. Uh, sorry, we're not going to do seconds. We're going to do minutes, 60 meters per minute. So that's the velocity, meters per minute. What's the change in time? We're using minutes. So that is over one minute. So here the units cancel out, the minutes cancel out, and you get 60 meters traveled over one minute. And then continuing, 
let's say that the player speeds up a little bit just for some variety he goes 70 meters per minute over one minute minutes cancel out you get 70 meters oh my god 70 meters and then player slows down a little bit maybe he's you know taking it easy so same deal I'm sorry about the messy handwriting we get 50 meters but you can see we've only covered three minutes here. This is minute one, minute two, minute three. And three hours has 180 minutes in it. Minutes. So in order to cover the same amount of total time that we covered when we did hours, we have to do this 180 times. One minute, 180 times, will get us three hours. So we have to continue doing this 180 times and then add all that together. Then we're going to get, let's see, if we do 100, if we do 180 times 60, it's going to get us about the same number, 10,800. Except now it will be much more accurate, <clears throat> excuse me, because we uh, used minute precision instead of hour precision. So we got much more accuracy there. Let's see how far we can take this. Let's beat this dead horse. Let's go to seconds accuracy, seconds. So we're going to do one meter per second. 60 meters per minute is about 1 meter per second, is about 3,600 meters per hour. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's say we're traveling at 1 meter per second for 1 second. We've gone about 1 meter. And then if the player speeds up, maybe he presses the sprint button, then we're going 1.5 meters uh, for 1 second. 1.5 meters a second for 1 second, that's about 1 meter, because these cancel out. And then 0.5 meters per second, say the character is uh, crouching or crawling or something for one second that is 0.5 this should be 1.5 0.5 meters now we've only covered three seconds so we have to figure out how many seconds are in an hour or uh, how many seconds are in three hours that will be 10,800 seconds there's that number again I wonder how that happened so we have to do this 10,800 times times in order to get the entire three hours worth of time and if you add all that up guess what you get 10,800 meters which I know it looks exactly the same but if we're using real values here then we this will be a more precise result than this will be by a great deal so how far can we take how much can we beat this horse uh, how precise can we get if we can get segments times time segments that are infinitely small then we can lay exactly on this curve and we can get infinite precision I mean we could keep playing this game and say okay seconds what's smaller than seconds microseconds nanoseconds picoseconds femtoseconds but let's just skip right to the chase we're gonna get infinitely small amount of time that we're going to sum up and so this will be one meter per second or whatever the speed happens to be times infinity small seconds so how do I write that down infinity small seconds I'm going to use a special notation here DT this is called an infinitesimal infinitesimal and it represents an infinitely small amount of time okay so continue along with my formula we're going to do a summation here summation where we uh, add the velocity times the infinitely small amount of time but notice how every time we reduce the time step and here we have our reduced it to one minute we needed to do a bunch more um, additions in order to get our actual value if we have an infinitely small time step then we need to do an infinite amount of additions in order to keep in order to cover three hours worth of time so that means this summation isn't quite going to work anymore so I'm going to use something similar to a summation but it's the same idea okay I'm going to use an integral that's what an integral is an integral is just a summation over infinitely small values we're taking our velocity and we're multiplying it by this infinitely small value and summing those values an infinite number of them 
to get infinite precision. So this is this is infinitely precise. And we're going to need some limits to our integral. It's going to be the same thing here. We're going to start at t equals 0 and go to 2. 2 seconds. 2 seconds. 0 seconds, 2 seconds. So, um, so that's what an integral is. It's a summation with an infinitely small time step to give you infinite precision. But this, this right here, this can be any function you want it to be. Right now we're doing velocity, which is, you know, meters per second or meters per hour or meters per some unit of time. But that can be any any rate function that we want. It can be players per minute if you want to see how many players are playing your game. Or it can be damage per second if you want to see how much damage you're doing over time. So it can be any rate function. Rate function. Okay? So you can think of an integral as accumulating or summing the the amount that this rate function gives you over time. And I think that's really important, so I'm going to write it down over here. Okay? An integral is an accumulation. It adds up over time of a rate function. Okay, so in this case our rate function is a velocity. Velocity is meters per second. And we accumulate that velocity over time to see how far the player has traveled with infinite precision. So I think we've beat that dead horse. Uh, no code video in this section. Next week we're going to continue to explore, and by the way congratulations because you just learned some calculus. Calculus isn't really all that scary. I feel like if you have the, um, the visual of, of, of what things are like, we're going to continue to explore this in later videos, do some more concepts of uh, accumulations, rate functions, derivatives, stuff like that. See you then.